What's up folks? Welcome back to One More Guitar. Thanks for checking out the video. You may have seen recently on the channel I did a live unboxing of the Squire Affinity Telecaster. And in that video I had a few issues with the tuning. And I've also noticed a few things about the setup since then. So I was going to set the guitar up today and I thought it'd be a good idea to turn the camera on and just share how I do this with you in case you bought this guitar and maybe have the same issues I do. I know this is a very popular model so you know hopefully I can help some people out today. So let's see if we can get this thing to stay in tune and maybe play a little bit better. Let's check out the setup out of the box and see what we need to fix. So we definitely need to bring the action down some. If you look at these saddles, you can see that they're pretty much jacked up all the way up, all of them. So we need to take care of that and that should fix the action. All right, so one more thing I've noticed about this guitar is there's something going on with the low E string. If I pluck this string and see it's flat, I can get it in tune and you see how it jumps sharp I mean there's a very small window of where this thing says it's in tune say so I actually do get it to stay I play a G note you see how sharp that is well that could be the nut but if I play up here on the 12th fret you can see it's pretty sharp there so the intonations off at least on that string so what I'm gonna do now is get these strings off of here. These are nines, I'm gonna swap them out with tens because that's what I prefer to play. And we'll get the guitar set up for those. And uh, let's dive into it. So one of the things I noticed were these frets are really dirty. They're not very polished at all. And so while I've got the strings off, I'm gonna go ahead and polish these up. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some painter's tape and I'm gonna mask off this entire fretboard. And here's a neat trick. So you don't have to spend too much time cleaning this up. Take a piece of tape the length of the neck and connect it to the bottom of all these pieces here. And that way you can just rip them all off with one go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some fine grain micro mesh and you can use fine grain sandpaper and I'm going to go over these frets and just kind of knock you know any rough spots off of them and then we're going to polish them up. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Fryn Fret Polish. And you've seen me use this on the channel before. This is a Music Nomad product, and I think it works really well for making these frets real glassy. So all you gotta do is put a little bit on a towel, dab it in a little bit. And it's okay to get this stuff on the fretboard, but if you do, you need to clean it off pretty soon. Took me 24 minutes according to my camera to do this. Much better. Smooth and clean. That's gonna feel a lot better to play. All right, what's next? So the only thing I've done off camera is put the strings in the guitar and tune it up to pitch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is stretch these strings a little bit just to make sure that they doesn't mess with us when we're trying to get the guitar in tune and you know checking for intonation and stuff like that. We want to make sure that the guitar stays in tune when we're working with it. So it's a good idea to stretch the strings. I like to keep my finger on the nut here so it doesn't pull out of the slot. Pre-stretch them basically. So what we want to do now is we want to check the action. Alright, so you can see here it's at about 2.5 at the 12th fret. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to take it down to between 1.75 and 2. So this guitar comes with the Allen wrenches you need to do this, or the Allen wrench you need to do this. I'm going to use the little one for this one. Alright, so the next thing you want to do is take the tension off the string you're going to mess with. You, know, you don't have to completely unwind it, just take the tension off of it some. I'm just going to put the Allen wrench in here. 
and you're going to lower it down just a little bit at a time and you want to try to match the screw height you don't want them to be crooked just try to bring it down and keep it matched okay once you've got it down a little bit then you want to turn it back up to pitch and check the action again all right so now you can see the action is at about two on the 12th fret so I'd actually like to lower it down just a little more than that and now you can see the action at the 12th is 1.75 and that's where I want it so now we're going to do the same thing with the high E string I check the action on it it's at about 2.25 so I want to lower that down to about the same we'll go 1.75 on that side too remember to keep the saddle even Don't drop the damn Allen wrench. Let's check the action. Perfect, 1.75. So now, how do we deal with the rest of the strings? What you need for this job, and especially on a Fender style guitar, Telecaster or Stratocaster, you need a radius gauge. And this guitar has a nine and a half inch radius, so I need to find the nine and a half inch radius gauge. Slide it under the strings. And you're going to turn it up like this. Okay? So what you want to do is go through and pluck these strings, and you want them each to be muted by touching the bar. So start with this one. Here's some buzzing. This one. Clean. Clean. Got a little buzz in there. B string. Clean. E strings buzzing. Okay, so, so what we know is that the A string, the D string, and the B string need to come down. The G might be okay because it's rattling out already. We're going to loosen the tension on these three strings. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to lower these. You just kind of have to eyeball it. Once you've got all the strings tuned back up to pitch, then you do the test again. Something went too low. So what happened there is we went too low with the D string. So now all the other strings aren't touching. So what I have to do is loosen up the D string and bring it back up some. Check it again. E's buzzing, A's buzzing, D's buzzing, G is not, B is not, E is. So B and G need to come down just a little bit. So let's just do this right here. All right, everything's touching. So we should be pretty close to the radius there. It's still ringing out, it's not deadened, but they're all buzzing. So now let's tune everything back up to pitch. All right, at this point, you should be pretty close to having the action that you want, and the string should match the fretboard radius pretty well. One thing you want to do when you set your action is to bend up high and make sure you're not bottoming out. Make sure you don't have the action too low. So the next thing we need to do is check out the intonation. The way you do that is you play the open string, you make sure it's in tune, and then you play the same note at the 12th fret. And you can see already that we're way better than we were. It is still a little sharp, but that should be fixable. All right, let's check the other strings. A string is in tune. No matter how light I touch, the D string is still a little bit sharp, so we'll definitely fix that one. Check the G. G is spot on. Oops, I tuned the wrong string. All right, B is looking good. And the E is looking good. So we just need to adjust the E string and the D string. So the way we do that, we need to get a screwdriver out because we have to adjust these screws in the back. Now I do want to mention real quick, I did that with a clip-on tuner. It's better to do that really if you have a floor tuner or something more accurate, but it'll work in a pinch. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use a screwdriver and we're going to fix the intonation 
So again, we had the E string and the D string were both a little sharp. So when a string is sharp, you need to move the saddle away from the neck. And if the string is flat at the 12th fret, you need to move the saddle towards the neck. Okay, so I'm gonna use this screwdriver. This is really not the best screwdriver to use for this because it's so big, it kind of bumps the guitar. So I've laid a cloth down not to mess it up. We wanna take the tension off of the two strings we're gonna mess with. All right, so that's the E and the D. So the E was sharp and we're gonna move the saddle away from the neck. It wasn't that sharp, so we're not gonna move it that much, just a little bit. All right, and then the same thing with the D string. This one was even less sharp, so we're just gonna move it slightly, that's enough. Okay, so now what we do is tune it back up and we check it again. And you just keep doing this until it's right. So we got the E in tune. Let's check it at the 12. Perfect. All right, we're in tune. Perfect. All right, I took a break, cleaned up my mess, and I've played this guitar a little bit, and I found that the action on the treble side was just a little bit too low. I was buzzing just a little bit when I was doing some bends. And so what I did was I got the Allen wrench back out and I raised the E, the B, and the G string just a little bit. Should be good now. I've got it tuned up. What I want to do is play it through the Marshall and uh, we'll see what it sounds like. I'm not going to do too much playing. I just kind of want to hear what it sounds like now that I've got it intonated and set up. And I want to do some bends to see if I can make it go out of tune really bad. When I first unboxed this guitar and was playing it, when I'd start doing bends, I mean, it just went completely out of tune. So. Uh, let's see how this goes. It seems to be staying in tune now. It definitely feels a lot better to play and it sounds better. And I'll say that finicky thing that was happening with the E string isn't happening anymore. So we'll just chalk that up to bad strings. I was worried it was gonna be the tuner or the nut, but I'm happy to say that's not happening anymore. So that's pretty much it for today. I hope this video was helpful to you. You can make one of these Squire Affinity guitars sound really good with just a little bit of work. So hopefully this video helps you make your guitar sound better. And until next time, take it easy and keep playing.